No one has ever claimed that changing your life is easy, but some people on TLC's My 600 Pound Life still seem to hope for a simple fix by bariatric surgeon Dr. Nazaradan. While most people eventually realize that it's up to them to make the changes, others are unwilling to take responsibility or invest any energy into the program, and in today's video, we are looking back at 10 My 600 Pound Life people who were questionably stupid. It is hard to believe, but some patients on the show are actually trying to undergo weight loss surgery for the second time in their lives. Angela Gutierrez, for instance, had already received surgery in her late 20s, but had unfortunately gained all the weight back and continued gaining. When she first appeared on the show, the 44-year-old weighed 608 pounds and had to rely on her niece and her kids for help. She seemed very motivated to lose weight following her first appointment with Dr. Now, but despite saying that she felt embarrassed and saw herself as a monster, she appeared unwilling to really change anything, missing all of her follow-up appointments and ignoring Dr. Now's calls. When she finally did talk to him via video chat, she told him that she was sticking to the diet and had lost the weight, but the bariatric surgeon was quick to point out that she was still on oxygen and didn't look like she'd lost 120 pounds. He called her delusional when she replied that she wasn't lying, but instead of trying to prove him wrong by going to see him like she then promised, Angela eventually decided to drop out of the program entirely. According to her, she had already lost a lot of weight and could continue on her own, but even though she updates her Facebook page regularly, it is unclear if she has lost any actual weight since her episode. At 622 pounds, 32-year-old Alicia had almost lost hope in her life and felt like eating was the only thing worth living for. Like for so many people on the show, her weight problems had started in her childhood, but now she had reached a point where she had difficulty with even basic tasks. However, during a consultation with Dr. Now, Alicia and her boyfriend Tim still tried their best to convince the experienced weight loss surgeon that Alicia wasn't eating that much more than she was supposed to. The surgeon simply replied that they were making excuses and not only lying to him, but also to themselves. As so often, he pointed out that there was no way that Alicia's weight wouldn't have gone down if she'd stuck to the diet and that she was most likely still taking in six to 8,000 calories each day. Alicia also didn't fool Dr. Now when she claimed that she was not snacking in between meals and anyone who has ever watched the show knows that you better tell the truth in front of this doctor because he will always know if you're lying and call you out on it. 28-year-old Gina weighed just over 600 pounds and was pretty much bound to her chair when we first met her, relying on her wife Beth and her mom Kathy to care for her. Following her first appointment with Dr. Now, she was supposed to lose 50 pounds in two months, but Gina kept finding excuses for not starting her diet right away. Unlike so many other times on the show, her mom and wife stuck to Dr. Now's plan though and refused to keep enabling Beth. After whining and complaining for a while, Gina finally gave in and asked Beth to teach her how to make turkey. Burgers. However, this glimmer of hope went out pretty quickly, and by the time Gina went to see Dr. Now for the second time, she had actually gained 8 pounds instead of losing 50. The next appointment didn't go much better, as Gina had lost only 5 pounds in 2 months, which was a tenth of what she was supposed to lose, and brought her total to just under 20 pounds in 6 months. After being given an ultimatum during the following appointment, Gina finally managed to make better choices, but soon started gaining again, and had her weight loss surgery cancelled at the last minute. Season 7's Mercedes Cephas was one of many people on the show whose weight problems are connected to childhood trauma. She had been raped by her father repeatedly starting when she was just 11 years old, and when viewers first met her, Cephas weighed an unbelievable 773 pounds. She was so big that she had to rely on her young children to take care of her as she was unable to move around and struggled with severe lymphedema. Although she stated that she wanted to lose weight in order to be able to live a normal life, she didn't manage to meet Dr. Now's goals during the episode. By the end of the year, she hadn't managed to qualify for surgery as she had only lost 80 pounds, constantly lying, whining, and making excuses for the lack of progress. She eventually left Houston, and according to her social media lives in Cincinnati, Ohio now. Last year, she started a GoFundMe page in order to raise money for weight loss surgery, but only managed to raise $175 of her $10,000 goal, so it looks like she still hasn't really managed to make any progress. 
People who are bedridden as a result of their weight often rely on partners or family members to take care of them, but unfortunately that often means that these caretakers are also their biggest enablers. And in some cases, it seems like there is nothing Dr. Now can say to make the enabler realize that they also need to change their habit, like in the case of James K and his girlfriend Lisa. James's weight had already forced his daughter to quit school to take care of him and his father had refinanced his house to pay for his son's transport to Dr. Now, but James still kept manipulating his delusional girlfriend Lisa into giving him more food. James was the heaviest patient in my 600 pound life history at the time, and at 791 pounds, and with a series of medical issues due to his size, it was only a matter of time until his body would shut down. Instead of taking responsibility for his problems, James just expected Dr. Now to fix him. During his stay at the hospital, he actually gained 60 pounds in a week, with Lisa sneaking in food for him. Appearing to be unwilling to change his lifestyle, Dr. Now eventually lost his patience because neither James nor his mom or Lisa understood how bad the situation was, so James was ultimately released from the program. Unfortunately, he and his enablers continued down their destructive path, and the My 600 Pound Life star sadly passed away on April 3rd, with an insider saying that James's heart gave out due to stress after liver and kidney issues. 51-year-old Pauline Potter was one of the show's most controversial patients as she didn't seem to understand how serious her situation was and had actually had herself named as the Guinness World Record holder for the heaviest living woman at 643 pounds. Before appearing on the show to get help, Pauline had claimed to have lost weight as the result of having a lot of sex with her ex-husband, but when she first came to Dr. Now Zaradan, she weighed 673 pounds, and instead of losing weight, she gained another 5 pounds in the following month. Pauline eventually managed to turn things around and after getting gastric bypass surgery, she managed to lose an incredible 300 pounds. While some people on the show have deeply impressed us with their incredible transformations, others have left a lasting impression for all the wrong reasons. At just 27 years old, Shanae Murray weighed 665 pounds and was one of the heaviest people to appear on season 6 of My 600 Pound Life, but it was her argumentative nature that made her one of the most memorable patients ever. She would not only lie about her eating habits, but would also constantly argue with the doctors and ignore their advice. However, when she went as far as having her husband sneak fast food into the hospital and trying to cover it up by throwing the empty boxes into other people's trash, Dr. Now confronted them. Despite claiming to be sticking to the diet, Shanae gained an additional 48 pounds and never even tried to work through her issues in therapy sessions. Dr. Now tried to make her understand the severity of her situation, but she instead decided to leave the program and the show, claiming that she felt misrepresented for the purpose of getting better ratings. In videos posted on her YouTube and Facebook accounts, Shanae had has stated that she continues her weight loss journey and claims to have lost around 250 pounds since filming of her episode wrapped. She also set up a GoFundMe page to raise money to pay for her own surgery, but regardless of whether or not she really lost 250 pounds, it looks like she is definitely not under contract with TLC anymore since the network is pretty strict about cast members sharing any weight loss updates before their follow-up episodes have aired. Liz Evans had been bedridden for more than a decade and suffered from severe lymphedema on her legs when she first appeared on My 600 Pound Life. Although she managed to lose more than 350 pounds, nearly half her body weight, she gained almost 50 pounds back when she went home, binging on pizza and fast food. Evans was later readmitted to the hospital to be monitored again, and there she was able to lose enough weight to get weight loss surgery. At the end of the episode, TLC updated viewers about Liz's progress, saying that she had started seeing a therapist and was taking a few steps in the right direction. However, in her update episode, we learned that Liz was still struggling with the trauma of being molested by a family friend at the age of 6 and that old fears were threatening her progress. Since she isn't on social media, it is hard to say whether Liz Evans managed to stay on track or ultimately went back to her old ways again. 
When viewers first met Joyce, she had been confined to her house for years and needed home health care around the clock. According to her, she had reached a point where all she was living for was food. But with a weight of 758 pounds at a height of just 4'11", the 44-year-old's body was close to giving out. So doctor now decided to keep her in the hospital on a controlled diet for a while. When she was eventually sent home to show that she would be able to lose weight on her own, Joyce gained 58 pounds instead. Hoping that dealing with her troubled past would help Joyce overcome the issues that drove her to eat, Dr. Now set her up for psychotherapy, but unfortunately his patient continued to gain weight. Despite being given her last chance, Joyce failed to meet the demands again. Feeling like she had tried her best, Joyce was convinced that Dr. Now's program had failed her, but judging by other stories on the show, it looks like Joyce was the one who failed the program. At just 49 years old, Lisa was bedridden and had to rely on her daughter Danielle and boyfriend Herbert to take care of her. Although she weighed around 740 pounds, it wasn't until Danielle found maggots in her mother's leg that Lisa finally realized how bad things really were. She contacted Dr. Now, who told her that she needed to make changes right away or she wouldn't survive the year. However, Lisa struggled a lot and the surgeon felt like she didn't even try, which caused her to have a meltdown and screaming fit. On top of that, Herbert kept sneaking food into the hospital and despite psychotherapy and a nutritionist coming to her home, Lisa didn't change her eating habits, claiming that she couldn't control herself. When Dr. Now accused her of lying, she gave a quite dramatic performance, eventually telling him that she wanted to die. This prompted the hospital to do a full psychiatric evaluation on her, only to find that she had just tried to manipulate them again. This got her kicked out of the program and it wasn't until after taping the show had wrapped that Lisa eventually managed to turn things around and get surgery. She lost 200 pounds and finally stood up on her own again, but then sadly passed in August 2018 due to pre-existing conditions suffered prior to taping the show.